Hey guys, today we're gonna to be installing VMware ESXi on a Mac Mini. Now, I have two Mac Minis here that I bought on eBay. Um, they need to be cleaned up a little bit, but um, yeah, like this one has still has the cement stuck to it and they have some scratches, scuffs, and some sticker residue still stuck on them. I actually already installed ESXi on, on this one. It's actually connected to the network already. I'm gonna to have to move it to, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, that basically stick it in a closet, but for now it's on this table. Um, now this this Mac on the bottom, um, this Mac Mini is going to, I'm gonna install ESXi on this today. This one's already got it, it's working. I'm gonna do this one today. And eventually I'm gonna do uh, vCenter. So uh, you might wanna stick around. I'm probably gonna make a video out of that too at some point. Um, so you might wanna stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so, as you can see, this is a little scuffed up. This is a relatively old Mac Mini I bought on eBay. I got both of these for a little over $200, about like 240 or so. And I don't know if you can see this with the way my uh, the, the way my camera's focusing. I think you, you probably can't. Um, let's see here. Yeah, anyways, it's the A the A1347 Mac Mini. Um, it actually has a removable RAM. Um, let me see if I can, while holding this camera in one hand, open this up with my other hand. All right, so I actually had to stop the camera to uh, open that up and uh, still have to turn it over because I'm using only one hand. This is kind of nice. So the, each of these came with eight gigs a piece. So that's not a lot, but you wouldn't use these in production probably, but um, I'm using these for, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just using these for testing in a lab environment, but if needed, I should probably be able to upgrade the RAM. You can see it has uh, two four gig sticks. There's a four gig stick of RAM and there's another one underneath it. Um, yeah, it has an i5. I forget, I'm not sure which generation right off the top of my head, but it has an i5 in it. And um, I've made a USB installer disc. Um, I actually did another video. You might wanna go check out my previously made videos where I show you how to create an ESXi install USB drive. Um, so go back and check that out if you haven't seen it or you need to know how to do it. But use, basically using a basic um, uh, USB, basically I just uh, created a, you know, a standard um, VMware ESXi install disc. Um, it, it works the same if you were installing this on, on a, you know, a, a PC based, I guess Macs basically are PCs before the, you know, before the M1 Mac. These are all Intel based, so it's just basically the same thing, but you'd use the same USB drive on, on um, you know, anything else you installed it on, whether it be like a, a server or wh whatever else, unless it happens to have a CD drive. But anyways, um, I, I, let, let's cut away to actually uh, putting, uh, to where I have this actually plugged in and I uh, actually, um, start booting it up. I'll show you how to actually boot the Mac Mini um, off of the USB drive and actually get the install going. All right, so here we are. I've got this plugged in in a temporary location, hooked up to an extra monitor and everything. Um, but let's stick the USB drive in here, nothing too exciting. But um, yeah, basically just sticking this SanDisk uh, USB drive in here. It is a, you know, a bootable ESXi installed drive. And there we go, we've got that in. And I'm um, going to hit the power button on the back here. And then we're, we're, we're actually using a PC keyboard. So um, not an Apple keyboard. Um, it's a little old and dusty, what I, uh, the keyboard I have to use, work with today. But anyways, um, so we're, we're gonna be hitting the Alt key. Now these two keys are swapped around on an Apple keyboard. So if you have an Apple keyboard, you're gonna be hitting this middle button here. Um, on a PC keyboard, it's this button. So as it boots up, supposedly as you hear the sound, you're gonna, you know, hit that button. So let, let's move over here. Um, power this guy on, come on over, and we're gonna just hold this right away. I, I didn't hear the sound, sometimes I don't with these, I'm not sure why. All right, so there we go. Um, this says there's a lot of reflection on this screen and it just shows like every smudge marker or anything else, um, or at least my camera does. But um, yeah, ba basically, all right, there we go. This is the boot menu. Um, it, it took me a couple shots there. Um, there's a, a few issues that pop up sometimes with an HDMI monitor. Um, it just doesn't get picked up um, by the Mac mini. Apparently that's an issue that comes up. 
and um, I basically had to, you know, pull the power off the monitor, plug the power back in, then, uh, you know, pull the HDMI uh, cable out of the Mac and then plug it back in, and then I was able to see stuff on the screen. Also, I had to hold the alt button down a little bit earlier in the boot process. I didn't hear a, I, I didn't hear a sound at all. I, I assume that's disabled or something, but um, I'm not sure why at the moment. But in any case, it is what it is. Ultimately, hold the alt button down a little bit earlier and make sure your monitor is getting picked up. Um, but here we are at the boot menu. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try booting off of this. So this is our hard drive. This would boot into Mac OS, or at least the, the Mac OS installer, um, because it's been factory wiped. Anyways, um, well, there's a Windows partition and EFI boot partition. Those are both on my USB drive. I'm gonna just try booting off of this EFI boot. So um, let, let's give this a shot. And I apologize about the screen here. I'm, I'm recording, um, you, know, you know, there's a lot of glare on the screen and, and given that this is an OS installer, I can't actually, you know, do a screen capture in using software on the, the, the device itself. But um, yeah, this is the best I can get with my camera and with the glare on my screen. Um, anyways. Let's, let's give this a shot and see if it boots into what we want. Looks like we got the ESXi loader installer going, which you kind of can barely, the, the top of the screen is a little bit cut off there. Um, you, you can kind of see it there. And um, yeah, just the camera placement is kind of suboptimal, but it, it, it's basically, it, this should basically work for our purposes. And um, yeah, I have to just make the, yeah, sorry about this. This camera angle is just not ideal. But anyways, yeah, you, you can see it's booting up there. Um, it's it's loading the installer. Um, you know, loading a bunch of I, I guess modules over there, and we're we're just gonna have to wait a little bit. And there we go. Now this is a slightly more interesting looking screen, even though it's still starting up. You can see there. Um, Apple Incorporated Mac Mini 6, comma 1, um, running VMware ESXi 702, um, 8 gigs of memory, has an i5-3210 CPU at 2.5 gigahertz. Um, yeah, so a lot of, you know, it's it's a modest system, but we're, we're this is really for testing. It's for a home lab. Um, if I need to run a lot of VMs, like I'm, I'm running servers, I'm not using this to run desktops. Um, and they're, they're not going to be under load or anything. I'm mostly just starting up, um, you know, be, be bringing up like web servers, database servers, whatever else, probably Hadoop and things like that. Some of that, like maybe Hadoop, I might need more memory. I might want to upgrade this, um, but I'm going to have my VM spread across the two Mac minis. And I'm also going to be setting up uh, a Proxmox cluster with, I, I ordered a couple more Mac minis. So I'll have four total. So I'm going to have an ESXi cluster and a Proxmox cluster. So the other two Mac minis are coming in the mail today, actually, um, as I'm recording this. Um, so let's give this a minute. This is still starting up here. And um, I, I have DNS configured, but um, I'm going, I, I might I might actually um, add my DNS server in here. I've actually set up a, um, I just set up a DNS server last night for this. So, um, you know, to run my lab, but, um, yeah, so rather than putting a static IP in, um, I actually think I am going to put a static IP in for now. Um, I, I don't have, um, I, I've set up a DHCP server, but I've been t taking it up and tearing it down a lot. I'm just, um, you know, I'm setting up some Ansible playbooks to automate things right now. So it's kind of a work in progress. So, and I kind of just like to give this a static IP, at least for the time being. Um, but I, I'm, I am gonna use my uh, DNS server. Uh, that that's going to point to pretty much everything else on my network also. So that's going to kind of be important. And I, I think my D, DNS server, I am going to be working on it a little bit more. Um, I'm working on some of the automation behind um, adding N, DNS entries and things like that. But um, for, for now, I think my DNS server is in pretty good shape. And this is really taking a good while to start up. Yeah, 
and here we go. All right, so uh, this is the installer. Uh, so we're gonna hit enter to continue, um, F11 to accept and continue. And apparently it still has to scan for things. And there we go, there's our disks. Obviously we're going to select the hard disk rather than our installer, the sand disk. Um, so we have our, you know, we have a hard drive and a USB drive right here. Obviously stick with the hard drive. All right, and I believe that said 500 gigs. All right, so confirm disk selection. Uh, I'm gonna hit enter. All right, US keyboard, root password. So um, let me type this in. My keyboard's not actually showing, so this is fine. And there we go. All right, so s CPU support warning. This, you know, the CPU in this host might not be supported in future versions of ESXi. So if you're running a future version of ESXi in a few years from now, this version of uh, Mac Mini that I have here may or may not be supported. Whether it continues to work or not, I don't know. But um, just a heads up, um, you might want to get a newer Mac Mini if you're using, if, you, if you're watching this years after I made this video, you might want to get a newer Mac Mini or some other type of hardware. But as of today, this hardware, this specific model of Mac Mini I have is working just fine with this. And um, it might not be supported in the future, but uh, for now it is. Or, or the Mac Mini itself is not supported. It's, it's almost certainly not on the list of supported hardware for VMware, but it is the CPU is supported and the CPU might not be supported in the future. So let's move on ahead. Um, F11 to install and there we go. It's doing the actual installation. And that, that glare is horrible. My, my, my monitor just looks terrible with, with the glare on the screen here. All right, so there we go. Looks like the installation is complete. We are gonna have some more setup steps, but um, we're gonna, for now, I'm telling me to remove the installation media and reboot the server. So I'm gonna pop the USB drive out now. I'm not gonna pan my camera over to show that, but uh, here we go. Here's the USB drive. Set that aside for now, and we are going to hit enter to reboot. And it's going to come up and then we're going to be able to set up the network and stuff like that. And there we go. It's, it's booted up. So um, you see if I can, and yeah, again, apologies about the camera angle. This is terrible camera angle. But um, anyway, so we can see it's waiting for DHCP, which it's not going to get because I don't have it connected to the network yet. That's fine, we're gonna give it a static IP, but essentially this is up and running. Um, I believe we could actually use it as is, but let, let's go in and, and actually s customize it. So I'm gonna hit F2 to uh, um, customize or view the logs. Uh, we're gonna type in our password. So the username's gonna be root. Um, let's see. There we go. All right, so system customization, and I should just tilt this camera up a little bit here. All right, so not a whole lot that we want to change here. Um, so there's not a ton that you really have to configure through this. Um, essentially, you don't even have to do this unless you want to change the IP address or anything. Um, so. Let's see here. We can, yeah, like we could test the network, um, configure the keyboard, view the system logs. You can view, view those through the GUI anyways. Um, now ESXi comes with a, a web GUI that you can just connect to, um, but it also, um, and, and then you get a whole separate GUI when you install vSphere or uh, you know the vCenter server, which we'll cross that bridge a little later on. But for now, um, yeah, I'm basically only gonna configure the network. All right, so network configuration, 
and you, you could mess with things like it, you could look at the adapters, the VLAN, etc. I want to I want to do IPv4 and probably DNS. Um, so let's look at IPv4 first. Now, um, there we go. Make sure we focus on the screen properly. Um, all right, so use dynamic IP4 address. We're gonna use dynamic, we're gonna use static. All right, now we're gonna move down here. Now, I, I, I'm gonna have a basically static IP for this. I would like to eventually get it um, into my DHCP server and have it you know, associated with the MAC address of this machine. So it always gets the same address, but for now we're gonna hard code it. Uh, so we're gonna have a static IP. So we are going to set this to 192.168.3. And let's see here, I believe my first ESXi server was 181. So I'm gonna make this um, 182 and then my vCenter server will be 183. So um, this works for now. Um, I'm gonna change this right here, just change the net mask. Set the gateway to 192.168.3.1 so we can get out to the internet and enter. So we've got that configured and we're gonna go down to DNS configuration. Now obtain it automatic, we can't obtain it automatically, so we're gonna use this. Now normally I would set this to Google's DNS servers, so 8.8.8.8, .8 and I would go like 8.8.4.4, .4, but I'm not gonna do that today. So today I am going to, um, I'm just gonna set only my, uh, I am going to set, uh, Let's see here, 192.168.3.22. Now, don't ask why I reserve these specific IPs, but that's what I'm doing for now. now I'm just gonna stick with this one for now, and hopefully that works fine. Um, if not, I can come back and fix it later, I imagine. Um, anyways, host name, I'm gonna call this, I believe I called my first one Tiger1. One. So Tiger2, I just thought of like a random animal name and decided to name my, my servers after it, which is fine. Um, all right, so we're gonna stick with that for now. We can always change it later if need be. I'm gonna hit enter and we are going to say, all right, so that that's, I, I believe that's everything. So, Apply changes and restart the network. Yes. Y for yes. And we are going to, I think we're good. I think this is everything we really need to do. So that's it. Now we're gonna come back. I'm gonna log into, I'm gonna basically unplug all of this and I'm gonna come back and show you the desktop of uh, me logging in. So we have Tiger2 at you know this IP address. So I'm gonna come back and show you the web interface just to, just, just to take a quick peek at it. We're not gonna demo anything and we're not gonna create any VMs in this video. We're gonna do that in a future video. But we're just gonna demo it, poke around the UI and stuff and that's it. Basically, we just wanted to show you how to install VMware on a Mac Mini, which is the same as any other system you install VMware on. It's pretty straightforward, minus maybe the, the you know, the the boot selection, selecting the boot drive, which is Mac specific, but other, other than that, it's pretty standard stuff. We're just gonna show you the interface just to see what it looks like. So I'm gonna cut away and come back to that right now. All right, so here we are. Um, I'm connecting from my desktop system. Um, you know, oh, apologies again about the camera. I'm not using, uh, uh, and th at this point, I actually could use a screen capture software on my desktop. Well, I've recorded 90% of this video with my, uh, you know, with my camera anyways. So I'm, I'm basically just gonna go ahead and finish it up with the same video format um, just to keep everything consistent. We're just gonna take a quick peek here, but most of the future stuff we show you with ESX is gonna be done on it. Uh, all, all our future VMware videos are, are mostly gonna be done on a, on a, you know, it's gonna be a screen capture. So it's gonna look a whole lot nicer than this. So um, yeah, anyways. Uh, just wanted to point that out. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead here and go to advanced. So this says your connection is not private because we're using HTTPS or SSL. And the, the problem is, is that 
the certificate that our server has is not, you know, does, no certificate authority has it. I haven't registered it or anything, um, which is fine. It's just on my local network with a private IP. Um, I, I guess I could probably add my own certs, but for now, we're not doing that. We're just using this for testing anyways. So we're just going to say, like, we, we basically click on the advanced tab and say proceed to this on safe. It says it's on safe. I know it is safe because this is on my local network. I'm not even going out to the internet, so it's completely safe. Um, any case, so uh, let, let's see, what do we have here? So let's let's log in, um, same password. Um, all right, let's see here. And there we go, logged in. All right, so do we wanna participate? You know what, why not? All right, so here we go, here's our interface. So this is uh, Tiger2, that's the host name. Um, we can see virtual machines, we don't have any installed yet. We have storage, we have our default storage, which is data store one. We could click on that and take a quick look. Um, so that's just our local hard drive, which, uh, yeah, so, it's giving us, uh, all right, so free we have about, yeah, three, 337 gigs, all right, whatever. Anyways, um, uh, we, we have our local VM network. Uh, we could create other networks. I haven't done that yet, but we, we could also create additional networks for our VMs. Um, you, we could, you know, monitor the, the CPU usage and stuff, uh, gives us nice graphs and whatnot, manage the host all kinds of settings we could do. We could look at the hardware. Um, we could look at the licensing, which I should probably, is this, did I, I did not assign a license yet. So, um, let's see here. Yeah, good. So I don't wanna share my license with anybody. So um, yeah, good that I didn't inadvertently share my license. I still have to add my license to this. So it's in evaluation mode. My other my other server I have added the license to so far. You can see like packages, services, security and users. You can see like we only have one user so far. We'll, we'll cover adding users and other things in future videos. We're, we're gonna do like an actual screen capture so it's not gonna look all ugly and terrible video quality like this. You know, right now I'm using a camera to record my screen. It, I pointed that out a few times, so I just wanna remind everyone, it looks terrible for that reason. I'm, I'm gonna, every, everything going forward is just gonna be a screen capture, so long as I'm not doing an install video like this. I'm just gonna do a screen capture and it's gonna look a whole lot better. Um, if we jump over here to this other tab, you can see I already have, this is my first Mac mini that I installed. I have a few uh, VMs on it. I've been testing it out a little bit. Like I have Ubuntu server here. Um, I have this uh, vCenter server that I have not installed yet. I have this, I have one called test one and one called test five. Test five was my first, uh, my first VM that I tested out cloning um, manually from the command line without vCenter. Um, that's gonna be a whole nother video too. Um, so we have this one I named, uh, so I named this host Tiger One. Um, and you, you can see that, all right, so it's, it's got about 300, 37 gigs it tells me so whatever that actually amounts to um, so basically we have matching hardware um, is this one I, I gave it Google's DNS servers I'm gonna have to change that but anyways we can keep it as is for now um, so this is my first Mac mini that I installed Tiger 1 and this is the second one that I, you just watched me install in this video Tiger 2 um, so I, I've, I've got my two ESXi servers set up and next step after this is to try to get vCenter working. We'll see how that goes. And I have, you know, as I mentioned, I have a couple new uh, Mac minis coming in the mail today, and I'm gonna set those up as a Proxmox cluster. So that's gonna be a whole nother interesting adventure. You might wanna stay tuned for that too. We had a nice, a lot of nice videos coming down the, the tube. We do a lot of other stuff too, not just VMs. We do servers in general. We do, uh, you know, anything related to coding, um, new electronics, Raspberry Pis, 3D printers, single board computers, all sorts of anything tech related. We do robots and all sorts of networking, all sorts of interesting things, hardware, software, everything. So you do wanna, you know, 
stay tuned for future videos. Hit that subscribe button. Probably want to hit the little bell icon just to make sure that YouTube actually lets you know when we come out with a new video and you don't miss anything. Um, you might want to give us a thumbs up. And uh, more importantly, though, leave a comment down below. If you know something I don't know, you, you just let me know. Um, if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I want to know how you feel. I want to know what you're thinking about. Um, so definitely leave a comment down below. Hopefully you found this video interesting, if not useful. Hopefully, hopefully somebody finds this video useful and, and helpful. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next time.